Today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to help you decide whether Iron Harvest is the right strategy game for you. By the end of this video, you'll know what it's like to actually play this game to help you make an informed decision. I'm not an Iron Harvest fanboy, just a strategy fan who took a chance on the game so I could report back with my findings to you, my fellow generals. First, give me 30 seconds to describe the game in a nutshell. If you're still intrigued after that, we'll go into more detail about how the game plays, the mechanics, and how it compares to other games you may have played. The game has a choice of hero units with devastating attacks, but 90% of Iron Harvest is Company of Heroes. The games are so similar, there may as well be long lost identical twins, where one wound up in World War II, whereas the other took some acid and decided real history was too boring and it needed more giant mechs the size of houses. It has squad based gameplay, taking advantage of cover, fighting for control points to boost your income, good looking cutscenes, a decent story, and a Polsky bear named Wojtek that can heal your troops. When Iron Harvest was first announced in 2016, RTS gamers were excited. Finally, something new. It reviewed okay-ish, but after a few months of ownership, the player base were generally unhappy for a variety of reasons. So why are we looking at it now? More recent reviews are positive, as the developers have continued to work on the game, and over time the price has reduced significantly. So, with a reduced price, particularly in the sale, is now the time for you to purchase Iron Harvest. Let's pretend you just purchased the game and fired it up. Let's take a quick look at what the game has to offer when you first log in. The main screen looks rather gorgeous, and you can see here a clear set of options for the campaign, skirmish and online multiplayer. The intro music is annoying, but let's push through that. The tutorial is integrated into the initial storyline, which is appreciated, but is it any good? Yes, is the simple answer. You start the game as a young version of the protagonist, throwing snowballs at annoying kids, learning to shoot a rifle from her brother, and a few missions in, you're introduced to base building and unit production. The game takes time to teach you the mechanics, but as it's wrapped up in an impressive storyline, you don't really notice at all. It's a very good tutorial that will see you through your first session with the game. Before diving into an overview of the mechanics, let's take a moment to discuss the game's setting. 1920 Plus and Steampunk are the terms the developers use to describe it. The technology is more advanced than World War I, but not as advanced as World War II. The game focuses on Poland, Germany and Russia. Not literally, as this is alternate reality, but we're in the east of Europe here. The units you have to work with either have a rifle, machine gun or flamethrower, and otherwise you have mechs instead of tanks, which come in all shapes and sizes and are the main face of the game. Let's take a look at the mechanics so you can get a feel for how a game of Iron Harvest plays out before looking at how these are applied in the game's beautiful campaign and multiplayer modes. Although it does do some things differently, it really is a carbon copy of Company of Heroes. But for those that don't know what that means, here is a summary. You choose from three factions, then you start with a headquarters and use engineers to build a barracks for infantry and later a workshop for your mechs. You will immediately churn out infantry and use them to capture various points across the map that yield resources to expand your army and create more deadly infantry or mechs. Your infantry operate in squads and make use of cover to reduce incoming damage. The game uses coloured dots to show you how good the cover is before you order infantry into a position. A green dot shows a brick wall is good cover, a yellow dot shows a wooden fence is okay but not great. Resource points can be captured, which is what you'll spend most of your time doing. Most skirmishes descend into a handful of mini battles across the map as you attempt to push your front line towards your opponent's headquarters by capturing and defending the resource points along the way. When a squad becomes low on health, you can tap R to retreat them back to the headquarters, replenish their numbers and send them back out. Losing a squad is not game over, but it is certainly a painful mistake. Each faction has a choice of heroes that can be recruited and they behave like something from the Battle for Middle Earth. They have high HP and special attacks that you can execute for them or they can be automated with a right click. There is a veterancy system as your units accumulate XP which can unlock special moves for even a basic unit. All of this sounds okay, uh, if not a bit boring, but here's something special. Infantry units can change their class type in the middle of the game. If a grenadier dies, they will leave a little grenade behind for about a minute. Give your engineers a moment to pick up that grenade and hey presto, they've changed into grenadiers themselves. Infantry can also be allocated to man a field gun on the fly, 
So infantry are pretty damn flexible in this game. You can also command them to throw a grenade and select where, so although the population count is very low in this game, the amount of control you can exert over your squads is very detailed and tactical indeed. There is a heck of a lot of micromanagement in this game. Moving squads from cover to cover, using their special abilities, and tapping R to retreat when they get low on health are all regular occurrences in Iron Harvest. The minimap is your friend, as you can issue capture and attack orders directly onto the minimap, which is a nice touch. And there are hotkey options, as well as a handy card summary of your army at the bottom of the screen to help you manage everything. You can queue up orders while holding shift, which shows a faint line so you can see where the units are going to travel next. It's frantic, but feels manageable as you flick between your various squads, engaged in four separate gunfights across the map at any one time. Micromanagement feels responsive and easy to learn in this game, but my god is the AI dumb when it comes to unit placement. Often the preview makes no sense, and when you click, the squad goes somewhere random, making you feel less in control than you should at times. There is minimal base building in this game. You basically build a headquarters, barracks and workshop, and that's it. You're otherwise capturing pre-placed capture points across the map, and there are minimal defences to be built. You can place some barbed wire and sandbags, plus a couple of defensive structures, but this game clearly wants you to push forward and control the map. Most games don't finish because the enemy has assaulted your base. They just controlled more of the map for long enough as the ticker went down. There's also very little in the way of economy. It is there, and if you run out of oil or metal, you'll certainly be pissed off. But as long as you keep capturing resource points, you don't have to manage resources as such. You just have to decide whether to build one big mech unit or spread your resources to purchase multiple squads of infantry, depending on the situation. At the beginning of a match, there are resource deposits, which take a few seconds for a squad to loot. And once they're gone, they're gone, which spices things up a bit. All in all, the resource side of things is a bit basic, but that's because the game wants you to focus on the fighting. Are you interested so far? In a moment, I'll describe the various game modes this game has to offer. But first, now we've looked at the big picture, let's examine some of the finer detail of the gameplay to give you a real feel for what a game of Iron Harvest is actually like. The graphics, voice acting, sound effects and music are all impressive, though not the best I've ever seen for an RTS, the production value is high. Environments are destructible, whether it's a gigantic mech walking through buildings or explosives sending smaller objects such as sandbags flying. The zoom controls are decent too. It would be nice to zoom out a little further, but otherwise the controls are more flexible than your average RTS, so you can view a gigantic mech exploding from whichever angle you like. The environments as a whole are okay, but a little generic, whereas the units are the real stars of the show. The infantry models are distinctive and pleasing to look at, but the mechs are where it's really at. They come in all shapes and sizes, but all of them look awesome. They've successfully designed a steampunk vibe, which has created the perfect stomping ground for these massive behemoths. However, don't be fooled by some of the artwork. It would have you believe that some mechs are the size of skyscrapers, which really, there are only a few slightly taller than a house. The unit counters in Iron Harvest appear to boil down to this. You're either infantry or a mech, and you're either good at taking down infantry or a mech. There's a bit more nuance such as flamethrowers are great at dislodging units that are in good cover, and there are some air units, but on the whole, you're either a guy with a gun or a guy with a mech, and the rest is an extension of that theme. The population cap is low in this game, but it's really about managing a handful of squads and mechs rather than a full army with rows of units. The skirmish has an interesting mechanic before entering a match, you get to choose your first and second reserves, which is a way of increasing your population cap mid-game, and also how you deploy your hero. It's an okay system, I guess, and gives you something to think about before starting the game, as you're limited in your choices by these little gold coins. Overall, the game has a great steampunk vibe that suits the giant mechs and infantry squads perfectly. The terrain and maps are in general a bit boring in comparison, but part of what makes the campaign so compelling is the production value of the cutscenes. By now you've got a good idea of how the game plays and the basics of the mechanics, so let's examine how the game lets you use all of this in the various game modes. The single player campaign is where this game really shines. It has three separate but interconnected stories following each of the main factions. The story itself is of a decent quality and length, 
I don't want to ruin the storyline for you, but if you're looking for a new RTS with a decent story, you should seriously consider this game. I've basically already described the normal skirmish mode. It's high intensity, if you like that sort of thing, on a relatively small map, with fights between one or two squads over several points of the map at once. If you're looking for something to get your heart pumping, this will certainly do it. And if you already know Company of Heroes, you'll feel right at home. A more interesting mode is the drop zone mode. It's in many ways the same as the skirmish mode, but throughout the match, new drop zones will appear at random positions on the map for you to seek control of. It mixes up what could otherwise be described as a stale skirmish mode because you never know where the next point is going to be, keeping you on your toes and potentially bringing you back into the game if the next drop zone is in a favorable position. The best part of the Iron Harvest multiplayer can be found in the missions section. This is essentially a horde mode where you take control of the different factions, set up a defense and fight back waves and waves of increasingly difficult enemies for as long as you can. There's a lot of replayability here as each time you finish a match you know you could have done things differently and want to fire it up again. The online multiplayer has been difficult to research. Clearly it's going for a Company of Heroes vibe and although it's succeeded it hasn't been able to replicate the success of the Company of Heroes series. I don't believe this lack of success is a true reflection of the online game modes. It deserves more attention than it's currently receiving and if you fancy playing the aforementioned skirmish mode against online opponents, Iron Harvest is worth considering. Plus as a modern game it will receive support for many years to come no doubt which is a novelty for those who normally play older no longer supported strategy games. I played this game for a little over 15 hours now and this is what I would say to somebody considering purchasing the game. The story is well paced and one of the best to be experienced in a strategy game. Although good, the missions don't give you many ways in which to complete your tasks, so replayability does suffer, but with that said, there are enough of them that the campaign will keep you busy for some time. The normal skirmish mode on its own is not enough to keep me coming back, but the drop zone and horde modes are highly replayable. So does this game offer longevity? It depends what you're looking for. The campaign certainly does, but the multiplayer, it depends on whether you like the squad-based mechanics. If yes, then there may be something for you here. If you prefer big battles and formation, then it's a resounding no. The price is a particularly important factor for this game, and it seems to change all the time. But the normal price right now is $30, $25 pounds or 30 euros. But in the sale, it seems to have a 67% discount. Considering the initial sales price was $50, you could be picking up Iron Harvest for less than $10 in the sale. So it's starting to look like a bargain. There are two DLCs for Iron Harvest. The first, Rusviet Revolution, provides an additional campaign. Though it doesn't contain a ton of new material at $4, and that's before a 30% discount on the sale. It won't break the bank if you're looking for more Iron Harvest campaign. The second DLC is Operation Eagle, which launched in May 2021. It comes with a new campaign for Usonia, which is basically America, who are also a brand new faction in the game. And finally, all factions receive additional air units. This is a beefier DLC with the price tag to match at $20 normally, but with the occasional 65% discount, bringing it down to $7. If you want to go all in, there is a deluxe edition containing the base game and both DLCs for a slightly reduced price and itself can see discounts of 62% off. So let's round this all up. Is Iron Harvest worth it? At first, they were simply charging too much money. But now there are some deep, deep discounts to be had. It's worth any RTS fan considering a purchase. Campaign is genuinely good. The voice acting questionable at times, but all in all, the production value is high. If you're looking for a new RTS campaign, I can highly recommend picking this up in the sale. If your focus is multiplayer, the recommendation is more difficult. If you enjoy Company of Heroes, then the chances are you will get along fine with Iron Harvest. But is it enough to replace your beloved Company of Heroes? No, it isn't. And it comes down to this. Mechs are cool, but they're not a replacement for tanks and the other vehicles you get in other RTS games. But if you're a bit bored with your current multiplayer game and need something fresh, Iron Harvest may be worth picking up in the sale, particularly if the Horde mode piques your interest. The only way I could recommend paying full price is if you know you're interested in RTS campaigns, plus you like the look of the frantic multiplayer in this video, and you're not bothered about base building with walls or a deep economy then sure, consider paying full price. But sales are coming around so often, if you're not in a rush, just wait for the next one. If you have any specific questions, please let me know in the comments below. 
If you're an experienced player who thinks I've missed something or have been in some way unfair on the game, please let everyone know in the comments. I hope you found this analysis useful. If you did, I have plenty more for other strategy games, so feel free to check those out too. See ya.